Hey guys, uh, I've had uh, this come up a lot. Hey, uh, is it the ceremonial parts of the law or the moral law? Isn't the moral law still in effect? Well, let me tell you this. God didn't change. All his law is still valid. Guess what? You can't be justified by it. That's all. Nobody's telling you because you're under grace to break God's law. It's just, it's crazy. It's crazy. But I'm going to show you how the law cannot justify. That's why we're not under law, but under grace. Because, see, Jesus fulfilled that law for us. It says and the ordinances written against us were nailed to the cross. Okay? They were the enmity against us. And I'll give you a bunch of verses that show you why. Okay? The law was to stop our mouths. Some people just haven't had their mouths stopped. All become guilty before God. See, there's not one righteous, no, not one. And you don't get saved uh, Jesus didn't die so that you can keep the law and earn salvation. That's not how it works either. He fulfilled the law on your behalf. You put your trust in his death, burial, and resurrection. He imputes his righteousness on you. You've trusted in him, so now the Holy Spirit seals you until the day of redemption when the body's redeemed, because you're already bought with a price. You're already redeemed. You're already his. We know in whom we have believed. And uh, we are preserved by God's power. All right, you began a good work and you will finish it. So I wanted to show you, nobody here is saying that the moral law is over with. Uh, God doesn't change. Of course he wants all people to live that way. But guess what? No one has because God's standards perfection. That doesn't mean we promote sin. I just, I wish people could get this. We say we're not under law. It means we're justified, declared righteous because of what Jesus did for us. He is our righteousness. All of his goodness is put on our account, okay? He took all our bad stuff we do and wore it in his own body. He didn't have any sin but became sin. It's a miraculous thing. And we become his righteousness. That's the only way you're justified, the only way you're good enough to get into heaven. That's why you must be born again. That new spirit, sin debt, wiped out. It's what and people can't get it. And if you don't get that your sins were purged and he paid for all of them because all your sins were future when he died, then you you you, you don't believe the gospel. And, and, and how can you have the Holy Spirit because you haven't believed the God, you haven't trusted in what he did for you. So let's look over here. So, of course, the moral law is still in effect. God doesn't want anybody to kill and steal and bear false witness. I mean... It's, it's just silly to say. It's just you can't be justified by trying to keep it. My friend Daniel Stone says you, you don't get credit for failed attempts at God's law keeping. All right? We've all broken it, so we can't be justified by it at all. All right? That's the point I'm making. Uh, let, let's go over here. Uh, here's some scriptures. I'll give you the verses and what they sum up to say here, and then I'll give you some verbatim verses. All right. All right just in Romans. These are verses about how we're not saved by the law. Romans 3.20, the law reveals sin, but can't fix it, okay? Romans 4.14, if the law worked, then faith would be irre irrelevant, okay? It says, Christ is dead in vain, whosoever of you are justified by the law, you're falling from grace, okay? Romans 5.20, the purpose of the law was to increase sin, it said the law was given so the offense might abound. All right? Romans 6, 14. Christians are not under the law. Period. Romans 7, 1 through 6. Christians have been delivered from the law. Romans 7, 7 through 12. The law is good, perfect, and holy, but cannot help you be good, perfect, or holy. Romans 7, 10. The law which promises life only brings death through sin. All right, it's the ministry of sin and death. Romans 7, 13, the law makes you sinful beyond measure. Why, why do people not get this? Romans 8, 2, 3, the law is weak because it, it, it's spiritual and we're carnal. All right, 1 Corinthians 15, 56, the strength of sin is the law. 2 Corinthians 3, 7, the law is the ministry of death. 2 Corinthians 3.9, the law is the ministry of condemnation. 2 Corinthians 3.10, the law has no glory at all in comparison with the new covenant. All right, 2 Corinthians 3.11, the law is fading away. 2 Corinthians 3.14.15, anywhere the law is preached, it produces mind hardening and a heart hardening veil. Galatians, Galatians 2.16, the law justifies 
nobody. Galatians 2.19, Christians are dead to the law. Galatians 2.21, the law frustrates grace. I do not frustrate the grace of God or nullify it or cancel it. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Galatians 3.1, to go back to the law after embracing faith is stupid. All right, Galatians 3.10, the law curses all who practice it and fail to do it perfectly. Galatians uh, 3.11, law's got nothing to do with faith. Galatians 3.13, the law was a curse that Christ redeemed us from. It's a curse. He redeemed us from the curse. Why are you putting yourself under a curse? Because you think you can keep it? You haven't had your mouth stopped by the law. You haven't become guilty yet. You can't see your own failure. Jesus said, you have heard it said, but I say he really lifted the standards. Go look at his standards in Matthew 5 and see if you can keep them. Galatians 3.16, the law functioned in God's purpose as a temporary covenant from Moses till John the Baptist announced Christ. That's in uh, Galatians 3.16, Matthew 11, and Luke 16. If the law worked, God would have used it to save us. That's Galatians 3.21. Galatians 3.23, the law was our prison. Galatians 4.24, the law makes you a slave like Hagar. Do you remember that? She represents Mount Sinai. Sarah represents grace. Ephesians. Christ has abolished the law, which was a wall of hostility. Uh, Philippians 3, 4, Paul considered everything the law gained him as dung, worthless. Uh, 1 Timothy 1, 8, the law is only good if used in the right context. And here's the context in 1 Timothy 1, 9, it was made for the unrighteous, but not the righteous. Okay. Hebrews 7, 18, the law is weak, useless, and makes nothing perfect. Hebrews 8, 7, God has found fault with it, created a better covenant, and acted on better promises. Now, that doesn't mean that God's law is wrong. It means that it can't work for us in the fallen sinful nature. So God, has his justice has been served. His wrath was poured on Christ for you and for me. People don't believe that, okay? That my sin debt's wiped out. This is the greatest news ever. Hebrews 8.13, it is obsolete, growing old, and ready to vanish. Hebrews 10.1, it is a shadow of good things to come and will never make someone perfect. All right. Now, let me go over to some uh, verbatim verses. Romans 3.21, uh, I mean, what do I got here? Okay, uh, Romans 7.6, but now we are delivered from the law that being dead wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in oldness of the letter. Galatians 3.10, For as many as the works of the law are under a curse, for it's written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. That's all of them, okay? Um, Romans 3.19, Now we know that what things soever the law saith, that saith to them that's under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. That's the law's purpose. If it hasn't made you guilty yet, this is true repentance for salvation. You see God as holy and perfect, and then you look at yourself and you realize, woe is me, I am unclean. I better turn to Christ, because according to God's standards of the law, I fail miserably. I need God's grace and mercy. God will grant true repentance to the acknowledging of that truth. That is repentance for salvation. All right. Uh, let's see. James tells us, For whosoever shall keep the whole law, yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. Romans 7, 4, Wherefore, my brethren, you are also become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that you should be married to another, even to him who was raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit to God. See, the law is the strength of sin, not grace. Sin shall not have dominion over you if you are not under the law. You're under grace, okay? Some people just haven't really gotten there yet. If you be led of the Spirit, you're not under the law. Only those who have trusted Christ have the Spirit and are led of the Spirit. You can be in the Spirit and walk after the flesh or after the Spirit. We're told to walk after the Spirit, okay? Because sin, walking after the flesh, brings death to us, all right? Uh, we don't walk uh, after the flesh. We walk after the Spirit. This is what we're supposed to do. Those that don't have the Spirit can only walk after the flesh, and those in the flesh can't please God. That's those that are trying to earn it in their flesh through law-keeping. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. For by grace you were saved through faith, and that not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man 
should boast. Now let me read this section of how the law cannot save from sin. This is Romans 7, 13. Has then what is good become death to me? Certainly not. But sin, that it might appear sin, was producing death in me through what is good. See what the law did? It stirred up sin. It showed us how we failed. So that sin through the commandment might become exceedingly sinful. For we know, see, people just haven't gotten to this place yet. That's why they still think they're doing something to get or keep salvation. You can't do it. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I will to do, that I, oh, now this is the New King James Version. I'll go ahead and read it. Okay. For what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I will to do, that I do not practice. But what I hate, that I do. So if then I do what I will not to do, I agree with the law that it's good. But now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwells no good thing. For to will is present with me. But how to perform what is good, I do not find. See, we want to do it, but this flesh wars against the spirit. For the good that I will to do, I do not do. But the evil I will not to do, that I practice. Now if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells me. See, there's a new man. That new man is in right standing, justified, perfected forever in the presence of God. But this old man, this flesh, we're told, was crucified with Christ. It died. It's already dead. It's already, sin was condemned in the flesh. This body's going to die, okay? But the spirit lives forever because the Father received the payment from the Son for my sin debt. That's why I know I have eternal life. And I want people to get that. I find that a law that is evil is present with me, the one who wills to do good. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man, but I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? So I wanted to explain that. Of course God's moral law is still in effect. It always is. But you can't be justified by it. That's all. That's all I've ever said. So I hope that clears up the law versus grace for you. God bless.